Welcome to the Unit 5B, Lesson 3, Solving Radical Equations. So in this lesson, we're going to look at solving square root and other radical equations. And we'll also look at some equations with rational exponents and just see how to solve those. Okay, this should be pretty straightforward as we're just going to be solving equations. What you do want to make sure is remember that if there is an even index, right, square roots, fourth roots, sixth roots, etc., that it's not going to be equal to a negative value. Because again, we're taking principal values which are positive. So if you ever get an even index equal to a negative value, that's going to be no real solution. And what we're going to look at here are some example problems. So the first one I'll do, you want to isolate your radical expression, okay? So that radical, ex radical expression needs to be isolated. So I'm going to subtract this 5 so that it cancels out and I have the square root of x plus 3. See that 3 is being controlled by the square root, so you can't do anything with it. Until we get rid of that square root, and we'll do that by squaring both sides. So we end up with x plus 3 equal to 9. All right. And now once that radical is gone, we can now subtract the 3 because it's free. So x equals 6. Now it's generally a good idea to check for extraneous solutions. Most cases you're not going to have to worry about that as long as the only expo the only variable is underneath the radical. All right, so we'll move on to the second example here. And we'll do again, we want to isolate this value. So the first thing I'm going to do is divide both sides by 4. So I get the third root of x minus 5 equals 5. Now since the index is the third power, right, I'm going to raise it to the third power, right? Square, square roots get raised to the second power. Cube roots get raised to the third power, all right? So once I do that, that these will cancel each other out. And we're left with x minus 5 equals to 125. Again, because that's an exponent. So it's 5 times 5 times 5. And so we'll solve this by adding 5 to both sides. x equals 130. Okay? So the next couple problems that we're going to do here are a little tricky just because order of operations and whatnot so you might have a little bit of trouble with it but pause the video give it a shot see if you can solve these two equations all right pause the video okay here's our two solutions x should equal 20 and x should equal 3 so check through the work if you didn't get those correct make sure that you're uh, doing everything correctly if you still don't understand why you got it wrong, uh, give us a, a question when you get back to class. All right. Moving on along, we're now going to look at solving an equation with radicals. Two radicals. Sometimes they're on the same side. Sometimes they're on opposite sides. So the main thing here to remember is that we actually want them on different sides of the equation. So, if I have two radicals on the same side, I'm going to move it to the other side by addition or subtraction. So, I end up with a square root of 4x plus 15 equal to 3 times the square root of x. Once they're on different sides, now I can get rid of the radicals by squaring. So, again, this square the only thing inside of this first set of parentheses is a radical. So these just cancel out and we're left with 4x plus 15. 
Now, the second side of this equation, there's a 3 and a radical x. So, since there's no addition or subtraction, the 2 goes to both. So, 3 squared is 9. The square root of x squared is x. So, now I'm solving the equation by subtracting 4x on both sides to get the variable term to the same side. So, 15 equals 5x. Divide both sides by 5, and I get x equals 3. Okay. So, if they're already set up for you, right, on the same side, you're just going to solve them the same way we did here in the second step, right? We're already set up, ready to use the radicals. So, why don't you pause the video, try the next two problems, see if you can get it correct. All right, pause the video. Okay, so here's the two solutions for our next two problems. X equals negative five and N equals five. So just make sure here in this uh, first example here that the index and the exponent match each other, right? They both need to be threes. If this was a two here, you would have gotten it wrong, even though you may have just assumed it was correct and moved on to this to this step here. If you had wrote a two up there, we would have counted it wrong because the index and the exponent must match each other to cancel out. All right, so let's take a look at the next page in which we're going to solve some equations with rational exponents. We're going to have the same kind of problem here, right? We want to isolate this exponential base, all right? So the first thing we're going to do here is subtract 1 to get the term by itself, 3x to the 1 -third equals 9. Now this exponent 1 third only belongs to the x. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this 3 so that I don't need to worry about it. x to the 1 third equals 3. Now the question is how do I get rid of a 1 third? I want that exponent to be a 1. So I raise it to the third power so that when I multiply the exponents I get 3 over 3, which is 1, so that just gets me x. Whatever I do to one side, I have to do the other. So 3 to the third power is 27. Okay? So again, if, it's, if the term is raised to a rational exponent, you want to isolate it, and then you want to raise it to the reciprocal power right, which is 3 over 1, we can write that as 3. So if it was something raised to like the 2 thirds, you would raise it to the 3 halves, right, or the 5 thirds, you would raise it to the 3 fifths, right. That's how you multiply and get rid of fractions. Okay, so let's take a look. Well, actually, let's go ahead and have you practice. So pause the video, try the next problem on your own. Pause the video. Okay, so you should have gotten 18 for this problem. Uh, it's a little tricky. Uh, in this case, because the 2x is in parentheses, that 1 half belongs to both the 2 and the x. So I went ahead and squared that whole expression, which canceled these out, which left them with just the 2x. Okay? And then the 36, because the 6 is squared. All right, so hopefully that makes sense why that all works out. If not, feel free to ask questions in class. Let's move on along to the next problem here. And these are kind of the, the most difficult problems is where we have variables outside of a radical or outside of an exponential expression, right? So in this case, we had an x here that, that doesn't have an exponent and it doesn't have a radical, right? Whereas this one has an exponent here, right? All the other problems before, 
right? Where we, even when we had them on separate sides. See here, we have multiple exponent or multiple variables, but they're both under a radical. See here, two variables, they're both under a radical. So we don't really need to worry about extraneous solutions in most of those cases. For Algebra 2, you're not going to worry about it. But if you have a problem, such as these here on the bottom, where you have one with, a ra one with an exponent, one without, or one with a radical and one without, you have to check for extraneous solutions. So what's an extraneous solution? Well, it's an extra solution that doesn't actually work. It looks like it works, but it doesn't, right? In the original problem, right? So you're checking back to the original problem to see if both solutions actually work. Right? And so what happens when we solve this, right? I'm going to subtract 6 from both sides to isolate. All right? So my exponential term has been isolated. And from here, I'm going to square both sides. And so what's happening here is this x value that doesn't have an exponent is being squared. So that's going to create a situation where I'm going to change the fundamental nature of the problem. x squared minus 12x plus 36 equals 3x. Now x minus 6, notice I didn't distribute that too. I didn't turn it into x squared plus 36. Right? You actually have to FOIL that out. But if you can follow the pattern, you should be able to get this trinomial without actually doing a lot of work. All right. But again, now it's quadratic. So I'm going to subtract 3x from both sides. Right. And so this all goes back into the original idea that since this is a radical equation, the domain is restricted. So let's see what we end up with here. Okay, so since it's equal to zero, you're going to try to factor this, and I'm not going to spend time in the video on teaching you how to factor. You should know that, but it will factor to negative 12, x minus 12, and x minus 3 equals zero. So I get the solutions x equals 12 or x equals 3. Two possibilities. I have to plug both in to see if both work one works or neither one of them works so let's go back up here and let's say we'll pick the 12 12 equals 3 times 12 let's put that there raised to the one half power so the whole thing plus 6 so if we simplify this right we get 12 equals 3 times 12 is 36 to the one half plus six, so 12 equals six plus six. Well, that's true, so that solution works. Let's go ahead and put a box around that because it works. Now let's check the three, all right? So plug a three in, three equals the quantity three times three to the and then that's raised to the one half plus six all right so when we simplify this we get three equals nine to the one half plus six well the square root of nine is three so three equals three plus six well that's not true so this does not work our only solution is x equals 12 so to get this question right, you need to show us both possible answers, and then you need to show us which one is correct and which one is incorrect. 
or which one is extraneous. All right. So go ahead and attempt the next problem. Uh, pause the video, give it a try, and I'll show you what the answer is when you're done. So pause the video. Okay, so as you can see, the correct answer in this case was the second one, x equals 2, and not x equals negative 3, because you end up with the square root of 4 equal to a negative number. And if you remember back in the first thing we talked about on the first page, was that you should not have an even index radical equal to a negative number. This is an example of an even index radical equal to a negative number and that is just simply no real solution or in this case an extraneous solution so if you ever get a situation like that that's wrong go ahead and mark it off all right uh, that's it for the video uh, come in with any questions or concerns in next class